Hi there, this is James Swanick, and you're listening to the Alcohol Free Lifestyle Podcast, where you learn how to take back control over alcohol and live a life of health, wealth, love, and happiness. Hi, I'm Eddie, and I'm 102 days alcohol free as of today. Eddie, congratulations, 102 days alcohol free. How do you feel? I feel great. I feel good. I feel more energetic. I, like I said, I feel great is how I feel. Oh, I love it. Overall, great mood. I love it. So we're talking to Eddie Dominguez, who's 67, and he is a restaurant owner from Nayarit, Mexico, which is about a two-hour flight south of L.A. or a two-day drive south of L.A., about an hour north of Puerto Vallarta in Mexico. Uh, Eddie, you joined our 90-day program and uh, have quit drinking now and you're 102 days straight uh, from alcohol. What was your drink of choice or your drinks of choice before you joined us? Well, actually, having a restaurant, it was three drinks of choice. So afternoon tequila, then, you know, evening uh, cocktail, which would be usually a Manhattan, and then usually a bottle of, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon with, uh, with dinner. And that was like a daily practice. I hadn't even noticed that built into it over the last 10 years with the restaurant, but slowly built up. And I noticed that it was, um, it became a habit more than a practice from the beginning. So... Um, I did the beginning of the year. I was looking to start off the new year, and I said, "Well, I got to take a break." And I found the thirty day, and so I did the thirty day. And while I was on it, I felt great, so I extended it to six weeks, and then actually broke it with uh, Valentine's Day, and then went back. And I wasn't back to the same as before, but that I said, "Wait a minute, I did well for six weeks. I should try ninety day." And in that same time that I was looking for a 90-day program myself, I noticed that there was a Project 90, so it fit perfectly for what I was up to. Yeah, so just for context, for those, if you're not, if you're not uh, quite understanding what Eddie's saying, he joined the 30-Day No Alcohol Challenge program, which is what I have, which is a more of a do-it-yourself-at-home kind of thing. You get a video each day. And then, um, as Eddie was saying, he... he I guess you could say fell off the wagon is the terminology, right? On Valentine's Day, you drank again. And then later on, you saw it now 90 <laughs> Day Beyond program, which is named uh, Project 90. So you said you were drinking tequila, Manhattans and wine. You own a restaurant. So why, you know, all the alcohol is very prevalent. How long or how many years was this kind of lifestyle of drinking um, prevalent in, in your life, Eddie? Well, actually, if I want to just... Think of the whole culture behind it. I did 25 years in television media. I ran three television stations in Southern California and San Francisco. And as part of the um, practice that we would have in terms of, I was a general manager, so I had my general sales manager taking out some of our top clients. We'd always take them out to dinner. And there'd always be cocktails and some of the best wines. And so it began as a, as part of, it was part of the business. It was just what everybody did. And that went on for 25 years. But when I came here and I decided, well, it's a small fishing village. or used to be a small fishing village. And what am I up to? And I, one of the things that I did enjoy was going out and eating. Um, so I began a restaurant and actually ended up with two restaurants. And, um, and it began slow, something that was overnight, just noticing it. It built up over the last 10 years. And you're, it also becomes a place where a lot of expats during six months out of the year are here. Um, and it's, you know, let me invite you to a glass of wine. Let me invite you to a glass of wine. And so it's just, it's always in the background. So part celebration and people on vacation. And so it's just part of the culture. And I hadn't noticed immediately. I mean, once in a while you'd say, well, I had too much last night and, you know, try to keep, you know, just uh, hold myself together. So that doesn't happen too often. And I'm very responsible. Uh, I own the restaurant. We have like two, over 20 employees. And I'm very involved with community work with the Rotary Club. So, and, and when I was with the television station, I always had a position of authority or power. So I was always publicly responsible in my drinking. But I noticed that over the last 10 years and being on the beach town, it got just a little bit out of hand. And I thought, wait a minute, I can't, I can't continue this way. I'm going to be, I, will, I would have been turning 67, which I, I did. And I wanted to start getting myself back into shape at this age if I wanted to extend and have a longer, happier, 
life, that that would make a big difference. And so I took on the challenge and I thought it was, um, it worked perfectly. It worked perfectly. And I think one of the things that, that worked the most is that it wasn't, um, it's like Alcohol Anonymous never called to me. It didn't, it didn't appeal to me. It didn't, I didn't feel I was in that realm by any means. But I did feel that I needed some sort of support to not do it on my own. Doing it on my own is I have no one accountable. I'm not accountable to anyone. And doing it with a group, the support group, it's a way of sharing. And then I'm held accountable just by publicly speaking that this is what I'm going to be doing. And I think that makes a big difference. And so with the people that are also involved in the group, which many are business owners, entrepreneurs, people that are successful, um, they were like-minded people with similar interests. And I think that's what made, has made it easier, made it a lot easier. I think when I finished my 90 days, someone mentioned, asked me, and I said, oh, it was very quick, it was very easy. And then I realized that it's easy from the 90 points of view from the 90 days, but from day one, it seems that it's a long ways ahead. But once having reached that, somebody else challenged me afterwards and said, well, do another 90 days. And so I said, yeah, why not? It's perfect. So I've taken on another 90 days. Oh, wonderful. And what were some of the noticeable changes that occurred during the 90 days? Or as you're sitting here now talking to me, what happened to you physically? What happened to you emotionally? What's happened to you professionally? Like what, what changes have happened during these 90 days? So I think the biggest change is um, in my professional work, just being much more productive. And that has to do with having just more energy. I don't get up, you know, it's sluggish and tired. I'm able to be much more focused. And so I'm able to accomplish a lot more of my commitments on a daily basis. I think that was the biggest change. The, the personal challenge that I had is that I also wanted to lose weight, which it looked like it was too far out to reach. But it did happen. It happened a little bit later on. Um, so that was something that came out, one of the benefits that came out afterwards. But I think, I don't think I know that the biggest benefit was just having much more uh, clear and clarity and, and focus in what I'm doing and what I'm up to. And seeing that uh, drinking got in the way and, I, and noticing how much it got in the way it wasn't just a little bit, it was quite a bit. And since I have quite a few commitments that, I, that I'm up to in life, it made a big difference. The last, it happened that uh, the pandemic hit at the same time and being involved with Rotary, we began a fundraising program to solicit funds from Canada, from the U.S. to be able to provide food baskets on a weekly basis. And so to date, we've fed over 1,500 families. We've also helped with uh, some soup kitchens that we're doing. So doing that, I have a construction project going on that I'm involved in, and um, that's coming along, managing that at the same time. And then managing 20 employees, 20 plus employees that were out of work and how to how to help, how to still maintain them on salary, at least for part of those three months that we were off. And then preparing for post-COVID as we come back into, into business. And I'm not sure I would it might have been easy doing the old way and I'd just drag myself so I wouldn't think about it. But I think this way was being very clear about it, much more clarity much more focused as I, I keep mentioning the same, but that's, that's what comes up is what was very clear to me. And I think, I think what helps a lot is working in, in groups and being on, on the phone calls with others uh, that are also in the program. Drinking is, is, is one of the main issues, but I think what's, what's really up to is we're all people that are up to big things in life. And that comes up as a conversation and that drinking gets in the way or got in the way. And I think that's that's what I make that's what I see that becomes very valuable. Yeah, wonderful. Tell us a little bit more about uh, what happened with your weight and with uh, oh. some and, uh, and well, <laughs> well, there's well, there's a couple of things. I, um, when I took on the program, I always liked metrics. I came out of corporate America, so I always do metrics. And so I did my cholesterol levels and dropped that down by twenty eight points. I did. Um, I had written that I would wanted to swim at least eight laps a day, three times a week. I ended up doing twenty laps a day every single day. It took, but it, it built up. It didn't happen overnight. Um, and so, with the weight loss, it wasn't. It wasn't easy. I did start overeating a bit, and maybe it was just the same anxiety or, or substitute. But as I heard others uh, in the group talking about it, I was just much more conscious of it. 
And then I wouldn't say miraculously, but the last 90 days, it began to shed off much, much faster. And I also began to put much more focus on it in terms of what I was eating, keeping a food log of what I was eating. So just being much more conscious of, of that. And that made, a, that made a big difference. I think as I go into my next 90 days, that could now be a bigger focus than it was the first 90. The first 90 was just no alcohol. And that, that has made a big difference. I don't know if you're being deliberately cagey, Eddie, but you haven't told us how much weight you lost. Oh, <laughs> 15 pounds. So it, it did move from like three or four pounds for the first you know, six weeks or so. And then I didn't want to get back on the scale until just two weeks before. And then I noticed that I dropped down to 10 or 11. And then the last two weeks, it just the, the other four pounds came off. So, yeah. Oh, I love that. So why don't you that just say, just, just say this. Just say, in 90 days, I lost 15 pounds. Just say that. <laughs> so in 90 days, I lost 15 pounds. That's five pounds a month. Amazing. No, that's more. That's, yeah. Yeah, good on you, mate. It's incredible. And then, and then, what happened with your cholesterol? You said that you dropped twenty eight points. So, just tell us what what happened with that. Your cholesterol went from where to where? So, from one eighty eight to one sixty. From so, so, I'm sorry. So, your cholesterol went from where? Sorry. From one eighty eight or one ninety, and I got confused. Now I don't have it in front of me. Or one ninety eight to one sixty. When it was seven, it was twenty. So that was seventy eighty eight. Yeah, one sixty to one eighty eight. So Actually, wait. the other way around. Sorry, one eighty-eight to one sixty. Ah, oh, I love that. So just for the, uh, I know that if you're listening on the podcast now, you you're you're understanding this. But just for the benefit, can you say? Can you just say, uh, my cholesterol went from one eighty-eight to one sixty. So my cholesterol dropped from one eighty-eight to one sixty, just by not drinking. So good. I love that. So your cholesterol dropped from 188 to 160. You dropped 15 pounds. Any other markers? Any other noticeable markers? Um, I think those are the the exercise, the increase in uh, the amount of exercise that I had set out to do. So I surpassed it. The, I didn't put any any amount of dropping my cholesterol, but it was 28 points, which is is, is pretty phenomenal. I've been, you know, I've done statins before and it takes a year to just maintain it. It only drops two, three, four points at a time. So that drop made a big difference. And the, I don't have the tri triglyceride, but that one was huge. That one was also huge. It went down, I want to say like 50 points. So those are markers that I didn't expect, but I was very pleasantly surprised with the results. So you said your triglycerides went down about 50 points. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. I'm just going to get you to say that, actually. So can you just say my triglycerides went down about 50 points? <laughs> my triglycerides went down about 50 points. Incredible. So my cholesterol went down, my triglycerides went down. Yeah, mate. And that's just from stopping drinking. Yeah, incredible. I, I know if you're listening on the podcast, the reason I'm asking Eddie to do this is because we're going to take a little... Uh, recording of some of these things that he's saying and stick it in a case study video. And so uh, rather than him having ha having him say, oh, yeah, it went down from 188 to 160, I'm, I'm trying to get him to say my cholesterol went down from 188 to 160. So when I insert that section into a little video we're going to make about him, the viewer understands exactly what we're talking about. Um, so we're doing we're doing some video editing and directing as we're doing this interview, Eddie. <laughs> You were you used to run TV stations, I, right? You know all about this. I was going to say, I know. I said I should have prepared for that. I, I exactly what you're saying. I, this is exactly what we did for 25 years. I did for 25 years, so I know exactly what you're talking about. And I didn't think about it beforehand. All good. Uh, and so, what have people said to you or noticed about you since you've been on this alcohol-free journey? Um, just the compliment i get the most is you look great your skin is is changed you there's a there's a certain glow in your in your in your look um and then they notice the weight because the weight it's i tend to be a lot more uh telling myself so i don't see it the same way it's like until i get on the scale and then i notice it but um people have mentioned it but what comes up the most and they mention the most is what a difference 
you know, you look great. Your face looks great. Um, and what they don't say, what I imagine is that it's not puffy and swollen as it probably is in some of the old photographs. So that's, I mean, physically, that's what it, they can see. You mentioned uh, to me a couple of weeks ago that uh, there was, you had a conversation, I think, with your godson, and he had referenced something about you not drinking. Would you like to share that story? Yeah. Um, so I have a restaurant, and my godson is named after me, Eddie. He um, he works as a waiter at the restaurant, and he asked me to drinks at the table, and then he asked me, and I said, well, I'll have a mineral water with a little lime. He said, uh, he asked me, he goes, are you ever going to drink alcohol again? And it, it took me by surprise because I, out of nowhere, he just asked because he's noticed that over the last few months, there's been no alcohol at all. And so it made me um, think, and how long has this been in his mind prior to the 90 days? And so he noticed it without me having to share anything with him, just noticing at dinners at home and at the restaurant that I haven't been drinking anything, any alcohol, not anything, I haven't drinking anything. I've been alcohol free the last 90 days, well now 102 days. So um, that just made me think, how many more people have I influenced and have had um, in my life that noticed my drinking and I wasn't being responsible for it? And so they're able to notice it now just by me not drinking. Um, how did your sleep uh, change? How did your energy levels change over the 90 days? My sleep level, you know, my sleep, I'm not sure. I think I sleep, I tend to have a restless sleep. So um, I, I don't think that was any major change that I noticed. What I do notice is that I'm able to accomplish a lot more in the day. And that just means me having more energy uh, during the whole day. But my sleep, I think I have other, I tend to stay up late, except now it's, you know, with water versus drinking something late at night. So I think that has more to do with my sleeping pattern than uh, just drinking. But what is does make a difference is that I'm up in the morning a lot more peppier, more energy than I had been in the past. So that, that's without a doubt. That make, that's, that's the huge difference. What is your intention now with your drinking? I know you mentioned someone's challenged you to go another 90 days, but let's assume that that happens. What do you think is your long-term vision for your drinking habits? Well, um, my long-term vision is, how, let me, how, how should I say this? It's, I don't have a goal of never drinking again, but I don't want to start drinking anywhere in the near future. Maybe I'll go maybe another 90 days after the 90, because I want to make sure that it's, it's a, I'm responsible for it should I ever decide to do it again. But at this point, it's another 90 days and uh, with the possibility of another 90 days after that. I'll take it 90 days at a time. So yeah, that's, wonderful. Where, that's where I'm at. And we saw you um, as part of the 90-day program that I have. Uh, we have a Marco Polo group, which, which means people can send little video messages to one another, to other members who are also doing their 90 days. And you very kindly shared a Marco Polo video message a few days ago when you met up with one of our, uh, one of your fellow Project Ninety uh, members, Roseanne. Tell us a little bit about about that story and how you had connected with her, I guess, virtually on some of the video Zoom calls for three months, and then finally you got to 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 meet one of the other members uh, in person. So interestingly enough, on one of the Zoom calls, sometimes getting on the Zoom call early. We have a little bit of conversation and where do you live and where do I live? And he said, I live in Yuma, Arizona. And I said, oh, well, I live in Mexico. And I, and so we've known each other now pretty much for the last 90 days, three months that we've seen each other on the Zoom calls and then sharing on the Marco Polo. And uh, Roseanne shares quite a bit on, on Marco Polo. She's a great, great person to contribute and to share a lot that's going on. And so I wrote... Um, how did I write? I think I, I wrote in the Facebook, I, or I wrote her a note that I just passed by Yuma on my way to Los Angeles. And she said, well, you should let me know. You could have stopped by. So it was a short trip in Los Angeles, three days. And so on my way back, I wrote her a note. She said, you must stop by. Even if you don't have time, just pull off. We'll meet at the, right at the Circle K, right off the freeway. And we got to just meet each other. 
and <laughs> it was it's a two-day drive so i'm always very focused but i said yeah so i pulled off and we met each other and it was instant we it's like somebody i've known virtually for three months but it's was like somebody that I've known all my life coming into contact with each other. There's a humanity, a, a, a relationship that is built up over this time. And it's a shared relationship of, of um, people that we have one goal in common that brought us together, which is being alcohol free. But I think we've been able to share that with people that are committed to our lives, to our families' lives, to better relationships, to being better persons in our communities and, um, and in the businesses or adventures that we take on in life. And so it was a, it was a wonderful um, idea that she had. We did a Marco Polo together, which is a wonderful uh, app that worked. It's a great way to stay in communication with your friends. And we received a lot of response from the rest of the group that are on in the Project 90 group, as well as on the Facebook page that we have for Project 90. Love that. Uh, I was thrilled to see that video. And you were just, you were literally driving on, on your way back to Mexico. And, you, and that's it. <laughs> wow and she just did, right yeah, off the road. did you have to deviate much to to meet her or did she have to come far to meet you or did it all work out pretty perfect she's she's very she said she's a mile from the exit and she said you know i knew that if i would accept it, the invitation to her house it would have been two or three hours and i had to make the border before nightfall because then we have to anyway it's too complicated to go through but no she met me she said get off at this exit make go around the traffic circle there's the circle k and i'll be right there and there she was it's literally less than five minutes from her house wow so it, was, it was great amazing and That's so he made a promise that next time i go i will set the time aside to be able to visit properly i love it yeah uh, well eddie congratulations on being 102 days alcohol free as we're recording this i'm sure as someone as someone is listening to this or watching this later on they're going to be curious as to where you are on your alcohol free journey because someone might listen to this six months later and go i wonder if you're still alcohol free maybe you will be i'm pretty confident you will yeah maybe you just, will. yeah you just accepted someone's challenge to do 90 days and then you know five minutes ago you said oh maybe i'll do 90 days after that as well yeah what would you say to someone? That's a very good possibility. What would you say to someone uh, who's listening or watching right now who's maybe considering either, well, they're probably considering one of two things. One is trying to do it, do it on their own with willpower and, and trying to quit and be really motivated and, but, you know, ultimately doing it on their own or doing it with some coaching and accountability and support, which it seems like you got when you joined our, the, the, the 90 day program. So what would you say to that person? So I would say two things, doing it on your own. Um, I tended to have the, the recurring thought and saying, well, I will start doing it after there's a, an event coming up. There's a birthday coming up on the so-and-so's wedding. Oh no, there's an anniversary. So there's always an excuse to postpone it and put it off because there's a celebration that's going on. Um, and so if you stay in your own head by yourself, that the tendency for that to happen will probably happen much more often. Making a commitment with where you're accountable to a whole group of people that are also making the same commitment and that you're open for coaching. So you have to be open to receive coaching. You just, not just somebody telling you what to do it. There's a conversation that goes on, it makes a huge difference. It makes you, um, it helps you, and that makes you, it helps you reflect on what it is that you're doing and why it is that you're doing and why you're making this, this decision. Each of us that come into the program do it for a different reason, although some reasons can be the same. A lot of them is relationship, a lot of it is relationship, both with your spouse, or with your children, with your co workers, a lot of it is for health. Um, and a lot of it is for business. If you're up to big things in business that you need to have much more focus and clarity. But it's a huge difference doing it on your own than doing it with a group where accountability is a big difference. Saying it to, well, I don't know what number of people are in the program, but they're all listening in at one point or another. And so we know who's staying on course and who's not. Which I'd like to say, there's a few people that um, broke and had a reset. and that was very powerful when they share because it shows the the humanity that each each person is 
and how frail it is and how important it is to get the support of all the others in the group and having that person come back on track and coming back stronger. And their sharing made a huge difference in the success that each one of us have had in completing those 90 days. And then since then, a lot of them have completed their 90 days. But I think that 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 was very um, powerful to be in a group like that. Eddie Dominguez, 67, from Neorit, Mexico. Uh, congratulations once again. Thank you so much for being a, such a powerful influence and force in the group as well. Thank you for sharing and for helping others. I always say when people first join, okay. they're very much the student, and as they go along, they become the teacher because people join, you know, on their first week or their second week, and you're now on, you know, day 70 or day 80 or day 90. Just you sharing what worked for you ends up helping others. So. Thank you for being a great student and then thank you for being a great teacher as well by um, consistently sharing in Marco Polo and in the Facebook group and turning up to the calls and supporting other people and asking questions. I so appreciate you, sir. And James, thank you. I think um, one thing I didn't say earlier was in the beginning part of the program, I think the first three weeks or so, I wrote an email and asking, well, what else is there? And having it in front of me, um, and being available the first three weeks and not noticing it. And you just pointed out, well, how is it that we can help you? You have your calls, you have your coaching calls, you have your videos, we do our gratitudes. And, um, and actually it was re-inviting me to engage. And that re-invitation to engage made all the difference and made that huge leap forward in uh, being able to achieve the 90 days and making the 90 days go by much faster and much more successfully for myself. So I want to thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome, Eddie. Thank you, sir. I so appreciate you and congratulations again. And uh, I wish you the best on your alcohol-free journey. Great. Thank you. Thank you so much for listening. I have some free stuff for you. If you go to jameswanick.com forward slash guide, I will send you my formula for reducing or quitting alcohol. If you'd like to watch the video versions of these episodes, then you can watch them at my YouTube channel, which is at James Swanick. If you'd like to send me a direct message on Instagram, you can do so at James Swanick. If you would like to try a three-day challenge, a free three-day challenge, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash three-day challenge. If you would like to try the 30-day no alcohol challenge, you can go to 30-day no alcohol challenge. If you would like to schedule a 15-minute exploratory call with one of my coaches to see how we may be able to help you in your alcohol-free journey, you can go to jameswanick.com forward slash schedule. And my request is, if indeed you enjoyed this episode or you have enjoyed the podcast, would you please go ahead and rate the show in iTunes and would you please write a review? A review might just be a sentence saying, great, listen, hey, this was fantastic. Oh, I really enjoyed this. Whenever you give a rating, whenever you write a review, it surges our podcast up in the rankings, enabling more people to see it and hear it and potentially inspiring someone out there to reduce or quit alcohol and potentially transform their life. So yes, while it does help me to get ratings and to get reviews, you will actually be directly contributing to helping someone's life by having them discover this podcast. So if you are open to inspiring others and to helping me in the process, would you please go ahead and give this episode a ranking and would you please write a review? Thank you so much for listening and I will catch you on the next one.